What can I say about The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask that hasn't been said already? It's well known that this game is set apart from the rest of the series because of how outright depressing, moody, and unsettling the game is with its presentation. So I wanted to make this video to not just point out random things and say, hey, that's pretty weird, but instead to analyze the deeper meaning of the game and unravel a story that's hidden in plain sight. This game is packed to the brim with so much symbolism and all provoking scenarios, so I'm excited to dive in and answer the question, what is Nintendo trying to portray with the chaotic world of Termina? After Link falls into the land of Termina and enters Clock Town, the three day cycle begins. Link must return Majora's Mask to the Happy Mask Salesman before the Carnival of Time begins in 72 hours. What isn't made apparent to the player is that Termina is stuck in a three day time loop, and once the clock runs out, that handsome moon comes crashing down and destroys everything. But no pressure, right? What's interesting about the time loop is that it can be thought of as a circle. Sure, it has a definitive starting point, but throughout the course of the game, Link is constantly traveling back to the first day. That's when I began to notice how important circles are in the game. The land of Termina is a circle. Clock Town is a circle, which, as you might guess, is home to a giant circular clock in the center of town. The moon, which acts as the impending doom of the game, is technically a sphere, but screw it, that's a circle now. I believe all of this is not only representative of clocks, but the time loop itself Termina is trapped in. It's a subtle reminder that Link is stuck reliving the same days over and over, a Groundhog Day scenario that is truly terrifying to think about. This circle symbolism could also be a twisted take on the circle of life, where instead of life growing and changing into something new, life in Termina never changes, and without Link's intervention, is destined to face constant anxiety and torture. Next I want to focus on the main antagonist, Skull Kid. We learned that before being possessed by Majora's Mask, Skull Kid was a mischievous creature who annoyed the people of Termina by constantly playing tricks. He was isolated from everyone, referred to as simply an imp by others, and only found companionship from two fairies, Tattle and Tail. It's a common trope, but when you have this type of person rise to a position of power, they now have the ability to take control of their life in a way they see fit. Majora's Mask didn't simply possess Skull Kid and he had no control over any of his actions, but rather, the mask amplified his feelings of rejection and resentment. The game shows us firsthand how unwelcoming the people of Termina can be right at the start when Link is cursed as a Deku Scrub. Nobody wants anything to do with him, they're disgusted, and even the dogs bark and chase him down. No doubt, the reason the game developers chose to have us play through this is to provide more of an understanding to who Skull Kid is on a deeper level. It's a fantastic example of show, don't tell, and just another way Majora's Mask is able to illustrate a deeper side of its story without relying too much on exposition, which Ocarina of Time definitely leaned into more. If you played Ocarina of Time before Majora's Mask, you'll notice immediately that many characters reappear in this game under new identities with no connection to their Hyrule counterparts. The real reason for this was likely because Nintendo developed a game in a year and hurried to get it released, making a game all about running out of time in the process. That kind of blew my mind so I wanted to share that. But let's analyze what we can. One of the characteristics of Termina that stands out immediately is how dreamlike it feels. Paraphrasing from the Zelda Encyclopedia, Majora's Mask did, in fact, prey on Skull Kid and caused him to create a parallel world, Termina, based on his experiences in the real world. This puts into perspective the other points I mentioned in this video. Skull Kid designed Termina to feel anxiety ridden because that's how he views Hyrule. The 3 day loop is there so that everyone including the player feels on edge when traveling the world, just as he does, before the inevitable pain and suffering he feels on a day to day basis. 
I find it so fascinating that Nintendo was able to craft an entire world through a character's point of view. They even doubled down on the dreamlike symbolism through some of the game's soundtrack. It lures the player in, thinking they're receiving a familiar experience, but then the twist comes in. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is my favorite Zelda game not just for its atmosphere, but because of the fact that its storytelling is layered. You have the actual raw story you experience, as well as the story told through setting, music, and connections to the real world. Majora's Mask is the story about saving a fabled land from evil, but it's also a story about letting go of the past, embracing change, and being there for people in need. All forms of storytelling are able to craft a layered story through various themes and symbolism, but being able to experience them firsthand in a video game, with the brilliant developers of Majora's Mask at the helm, make it one of the greatest gaming experiences of all time. For this video, I didn't want to go through the laundry list of creepy things you can find in Majora's Mask because they're everywhere. That's basically the point of the game. Thankfully, there's a lot more depth to the game than what would appear as nonsensical psychedelic imagery. There's a ton of stuff in Majora's Mask I didn't mention, so if you want me to make a follow-up to this video going into more specifics, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Anyways, that's it for me. Thanks and have a good one.